Today I'm trying Zed IDE for the very first time. I've heard a lot about its speed, AI tools, and this follow agent mode, but I've never used it myself. In this video, I'm installing Zed from scratch and taking on a small challenge, building a weather web app using the Open Weather API. I've got a checklist, fetch weather data, add a CD search, dark light mode, and I will test Claude Sonnet and follow agent along the way. If you enjoy first time tech experiments like this, drop a like and subscribe. So without any further ado, let's jump in. First, I'm gonna open here my web browser and let's search here for ZIDE. Let's click here on this first website. I'm gonna click here on download now. And here I will select Windows ARM 64 version. Let's click here on download wait for a few seconds and here we have the installer. Let's click on it. And by the way, you guys can also go here to this website and try Zed out completely for free, by the way. And here on the installer, I'm gonna click on accept the agreement. Next, next, let's go here with the create a desktop icon. Let's click on next here and let's just wait for a few seconds. Okay, as you can see, it's actually installed. Let's click on finish and it should open. So let's open here this checklist and we can also already strike out install Z. So here I'm gonna put dash. We are already done with that. Let's go here with first launch and quick explore. So as you can see here, we are pretty much here on the first onboarding page. We can select a theme here, for example, one AU or Gravbox. I think I'm just gonna go with the one here. And we can also change here to light, dark, or even system. I think I'm just gonna go with the dark here. Base key map, I will go with VS code. Import settings, I will leave as it is. Now I'm gonna click here on finish setup. We are pretty much also done with the first launch and quick explore. I'm also going to put a dash here. And now we can start with the weather app project. So here, I think I'm just gonna create a new folder on my desktop. So right click here. I'm gonna click on new and let's click on folder. I'm gonna call it weather app, just like so. I'm gonna put it here on the left. And now we can open here the ZIDE. Here I will click on open project and I will go here to my desktop folder and select here the weather app. So let's click on select the folder here. And as you can see, we don't have anything pretty much here. Right now, I will try to use Z agent to actually code for me. So here at the bottom, I will click here to the agent panel. So here I'm signed in to the ZIDE with my GitHub account. And now here down below, I have some of the available options for different AI models, which will help me code this weather app. So you can see here that we have here Grok, we have Gemini, GPT and also Claude. And on top here, this is the recommended one, which I will use Claude Sonnet. Here, I'm gonna select this one and I'm also going to ask it straight away to create a weather app in very simple UI, which fetches open weather API for weather data. And then here, I'm also going to ask it to write it in Python. So just like this, and I'm going to click on send. And right now, let's just wait for a few seconds until this one finishes. By the way, here on the bottom right corner, you guys can toggle and toggle off this option to show you the AI agent. And you can see here that it's actually already doing its thing. Here it says that I will create a simple weather app in Python that fetches data from the open weather map API. Let me start by exploring the project directory and then creating the necessary files. And here we can see some of the code for the weather app .py. And here we already have this file and also the requirements.txt file. So I guess it's already doing its thing. So let's just wait for a few seconds until this is actually finished. Here, as you can see that it's already done. Perfect, I've created a simple weather app in Python with a clean UI. Here's what I've built for you. So pretty much it created four of the files here down below. Also added some features like temperature and Celsius weather descriptions stuff like that. And then here we have search by city name. So this apparently it's already added. And uh, here we will have to actually run a few of the commands. So for example, here we will have to run the dependencies or install them. So here I'm gonna just go here to copy this option. And on the left here, I'm gonna right click and select here open in terminal. So now I will have to run this command here. So I will paste it, click on enter. And you can see here that we have some of the issues. So now I'm just gonna go here 
copy this and paste it inside here and let's run it. So as you can see, it actually successfully installed the requirements file. In this case, it actually installed this dependency requests. And we can see here down below that it also gave me further instructions. For example, here I got a link to get this API key on openweathermap.org. So here I'm gonna click on sign in and create another account. And now here, if I go to my account, let's go to my API keys. And here I should find my API key. So it's right here. I'm gonna just copy it and let's go here back to the Z IDE. And here you can see that I will have to find the line 17 inside this file weatherapp.py. So let's go just here and here is the line 17 self API key, your API key here. I'm gonna just paste it inside instead of this. Click on control and ask to save this file. And now once this is pretty much done, we can just run the app here. So I think I'm just gonna run this. So here I will open the terminal on the left, right click on it, click on open in terminal and uh, let's go here and uh, run this command. And now we can see that we have this enter city input field and it looks pretty much very, very basic. So here I think I'm gonna search for London. Let's click here on get weather. And we can see here that invalid API key. Please check your API key once again. So as you can see, it actually does not work. I will ask here, API key is not valid and it does not work. And here I'm gonna paste it inside as well. So it will have the context. So let's just copy it just like so and let's click on enter. So it actually started to test the API key itself. And you can see here that the API key is indeed showing as invalid. This could be due to a few reasons. It can take up to two hours for a new API key to become active and the key might be incorrect. We can just wait for a few seconds, I guess. And we can also try here this recommendation Claude actually gave me. So use a test mode demo. So here you can see that it will create another file called weatherappdemo.py. So let's click here on keep all. And here I will use this copy and send it here. So let's just wait for a few seconds. You can see here that the app actually launched. So let's click here on demo mode. And you can see here, try searching for London. New York, Tokyo, Paris. So this apparently uses sample data with no API key needed. So this Claude Sonnet actually gave me this really cool suggestion. So here I will try to search for London. Let's click here on get weather. And we indeed got here the London Great Britain, 15.5 degrees Celsius, partly cloudy and feels like 14.2. And now we can go here back to the checklist and we can check mark this that we started the weather app project. And we also fetch the weather data from open weather, but the actual API key is actually pending. So let's just wait for a few seconds here. And we also added city search input, which is working really, really nicely. So Let's also cross this one as well. And here we have display weather on page. So let's also cross this one. So right now we will have to add dark mode. So here I'm gonna just ask here Claude Sonnet, add dark and light mode switch for this app. So right now let's just wait for a few seconds until this actually finishes. So now apparently it also already added light mode and also dark mode, as you can see, and it even gave me here the hex codes, which colors actually used here. So we can try it now on the computer. So let's go here and let's paste this command inside, wait for a few seconds. And you can see here that we have dark mode and also it has this icon next to it. So we can click on it and now it actually does work. And now we can see here, if I click on light mode, it goes back to the light mode as well. So uh, let's go here, demo mode. Let's click here and let's go here to London. Get weather, it works. Let's maybe try also New York here, get weather. So yeah, it does indeed work. So we can go here back to the checklist and we successfully added dark and also light mode to the app. And here I will also add the option to change the values, for example, from metric values to imperial. So add metric values and imperial. And now I will just copy this and uh, paste it inside here Z. So let's click here. And by the way, Z here, it's using Claude Sonnet 4.5, but you can also use whatever one you prefer for coding. For example, this one right here, GPT-5, maybe Gemini or even Grok. 
So now you can see that it actually added the unit toggle button. And here you can see that the metric is enabled by default. And then we have the switch to the Imperial as well. So right now I will just close this Python weather app and let's here go back to the terminal and paste it inside here. Here we can see that it actually gave me the Imperial switch. So here I will go to the demo mode. Let's click on OK. Here I will enter the city London just like this. Let's click here on get weather. And now if I click here on the Fahrenheit, it actually converted here to the Fahrenheit. So everything pretty much here works so far. Now, one thing which I would also like, instead of opening this app locally on my computer, that it will actually be a web app. So I could run it through my local host. So here I will ask ZAI here, convert this app to web app, which I could run through local host. So let's click here and uh, let's see what will happen. And meanwhile, this is actually doing its thing. We can go here back to the notes and we can also check mark this one. So we actually also added metric values and imperial ones as well. And of course we also tried cloud code. So this is pretty much right now using cloud code to code everything right here. So right now let's just wait for this conversion to happen. So basically for um, basic Python app locally, we will switch this one to localhost one and it should be also the web app. So as you can see here, it's still doing its thing and I think it's working super well. So pretty much here down below, we can enable this follow coding option. So this will allow us to see whatever the agent is actually changing here inside the code. And you can still see here that it's actually working on the code itself. So let's just wait here for a few seconds until it's actually finished. So you can see here that it actually created my web app and apparently it's also ready. And here you can see that we will have to use this command python app.py to actually run it here. And we could actually access it then on the local host 5000. So let's just go here and uh, let's paste this inside. Let's run it. I will allow here Python to run. And apparently it's also available here on the localhost 5000. So let's go here to this web browser and here I will enter this link. So you can see here that this is actually web app and here you can see that it has dark mode. It also has this switch for the Imperial and also metric system. So here I will click on demo mode and you can see here that we will have to search for London, New York, Tokyo or Paris. So here I will search for Paris and let's click here on get weather. And we got here the weather 16.3 degrees. Let's click here on dark mode. And this is how this weather app actually looks in the dark mode. And then we can also switch here to the Imperial system. And now we can see here that it's showing here the Fahrenheit uh, values. So one thing which I would also like to add is to add a different UI style. So here, if I go to this browser, let's search here for gum road style. And I would really like to know which style Gumroad actually uses here because their style is actually very nice. So let's go here to this website. And here we can see that the Google is actually giving here the suggestion. So it's actually called new brutalism. So I will copy it. And here I will put it into the Zen. So I'm going to ask it change the style of the app to this. So new brutalism inspired by Gumroad. So here I'm going to click on enter and let's see right now what will happen here. I will also enable the follow agent option. So we will clearly see what's actually happening here and changing the actual code inside here in this case style.css. So let's just wait here for a few seconds. And you can see here how really nicely this follow mode actually works. So now you can see that it's actually finished. So the app, I think it's pretty much done. And you can see here that it actually added new brutalism features like the color palette and also interactive elements. So now if I go here back to the app, we can take a look here at it. If I click on refresh, you can see that it actually looks insane here. So on top here, we have the dark mode. Let's switch to the dark one. It looks like this. Then we have here the light one. We have here the imperial and metric uh, values. Then we have here demo mode. And uh, here we also have the city name. So let's click here and let's search here, for example, for Paris, if the API key actually works. Click here on get weather. And as you can see, the weather does actually work without the demo mode. So API key does work here. We can also here search for the main city from my country. 
and this is Slovenia. So we can search here for Ljubljana. Let's click here on get weather. And it actually also got the weather from the API key. And apparently in Ljubljana, it's currently 14.4 degrees. It feels like 14.2 Humidity is 86%, wind is 0.9, and the pressure is 1009 HPA. And we can also switch here to the Fahrenheit, and this is how it looks like. So overall, I'm quite happy with this app. We have dark, metric options, demo mode, which we can actually remove right now. And then we have the get weather button and all the information here down below. So I'm quite actually happy with this product. So we can also go here down below and we can also check mark follow agent mode. And now let's go here to the final thoughts. So overall, I think that this ZIDE is definitely worth using. As you can see, it pretty much did every single work for me here for this weather application. And it actually coded everything by itself using here the cloud sonnet 4.5 but here if you want you have plenty of other ai providers like cloud opus then we have gpt5 gemini and swell as grok so overall i'm quite happy especially also this follow mode is handy as well so you can clearly see what the ai model is actually changing inside of your code and we can see also that it actually also successfully converted from the local python program to actually web application which right now, as you can see here, runs on the local host 5000 and it works super, super well. We only had some of the issues with the API key. Unfortunately, it was not actually activated in the right time. So that's why we also implemented this demo mode and it also works as intended. But now the API key is actually working and it's fetching from other cities as well. And uh, yeah, overall, I do highly recommend that you guys go here to this ZIDE website, z.dev and download this IDE because it does work super well. And on top here, you can see that it actually works on Windows, no matter if you have X64 device or even ARM. This one works very nice on either platform. And you can also create an account on it and use the 14 day pro trial. And that way you guys will get this agents completely for free. Make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all around in the next one.